Hello, hello everyone. So I'm sitting outside with the dogs. My little foster baby's actually laying down here at my feet. Um, I wanted to chat a little today about fostering. The topic I don't think I've done a video on in quite a long time. And unfortunately this year has not allotted me to do much with fostering. Um, very grateful and very happy to have a foster in the house right now. As much work as puppies are, they are so worth it. Fostering is worth it. So that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today is the fact that fostering saves lives. And it is worth any tear that you might cry when they get adopted and leave your home. Um, so I get a lot of comments when I foster. I get a lot of messages and things from people that... Um, you know, oh, you should keep that one. Oh, I could never foster. I couldn't handle it. So I am here to tell you that in my personal opinion, um, I don't think fostering is as hard as people think that it is. But you have to have the right mindset and you have to have a little bit of thick skin, you know, like not to get too attached and thing, things like that. So, as all of you know, um, we did lose one of ours in April, and we also lost one last April. So we're down to two dogs. We have no intentions of adopting. We are fostering because we want to be a part of giving animals a second chance. And I have to say that it's been, like with just having two dogs, it was never hard with three or four, but it's been almost easier at this point, um, only having two dogs and then a little baby to focus on, who I think is chewing. Hold on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? I don't know if you can see her. There she is. Say hi, there's Zena. Beautiful little girl. Um, but I wanna just kind of talk about some, some thoughts or concerns or misconceptions that people have when it comes to fostering. So first of all, know that when you're fostering, that you have no out-of-pocket expense on your part, with the exception of maybe having to run them to a vet visit depending upon their needs and what the rescue needs as well. Um, your organizations out there, your rescue should be providing you with things like food, treats, if the animals are on medication of any sort, all of that's gonna come with them. As well, they should be providing you crates and bedding and anything that you need to take care of that animal. Um, and of course, I don't know, like me, I just have a habit of having just plenty of things in my house, period. Um, it is very beneficial for me having dogs because my dogs help to train the foster puppies to learn what to do and how to do things. Now, of course, there's also fostering other animals like cats. Uh, I can't foster cats because I have a dog that doesn't like them, so I can't speak upon fostering cats, but as far as fostering puppies, dogs, um, it's really about just providing the space and providing the love and the care for that animal until it finds a home. And then comes that comment that I hear all the time. I could never do it. It would be too hard. I would want to keep them all. I couldn't handle the sadness of them leaving. See me rolling my eyes? <laughs> you know I am very blunt in my opinions and my thoughts. Um, so the reason I'm rolling my eyes is because I hear it all the time and I wanted to foster years ago and I have been on and off for many years and um, you know working and volunteering with different rescues and I've done a lot of work over the past like I don't know, 11 years uh, with a number of local rescues and things. Fostering saves lives. And when you foster, in all honesty, you have to have this separate mindset. It's very hard to put into words, but you need to love them like your own, but you need to have this like detachment um, with those emotions. It's really hard to put into words. So when we bring fosters into the home, we do. We love them like they are our own. We treat them no different than we would our dogs. We give them the same love, care, and respect that our animals get here in this house. 
but there's that that part of our brain that we shut off that says no we're not keeping we're just here to be a part of their life for the next step in their journey for them to find a good home so it's having the right mentality don't step into it going oh my god i can't do this oh my god i'm never going to be able to let go of this animal go into it saying i am the next chapter in their life i am the next positive opportunity in their life to have a chance at something better these animals come from all kinds of situations whether it be that they were found as strays or they were abused or they were purposefully dumped i can't even begin to tell you the horrible backstories i have seen and heard amongst these years which is what makes me love and do rescue but if you're on the fence about fostering, all I can say to you is try it, right? How do you know if you don't try? So think about opening up your home to an animal who is in need. So let me paint a picture for you. This past Sunday, we did transport. It's gonna blow your mind. So for some of you that, that don't know much or haven't worked much, um, in rescue to have been there would have been really mind-blowing but 55 dogs i want i want you to let this sink in for a minute 55 dogs came up on transport on sunday every single one of which would have been euthanized had they not had rescues and loving people to take them in and give them that chance at a good life. That's probably made some of your stomachs turn or made you go, holy shit. Yeah. So there's a lot of rescues here locally that are foster based. So a foster based rescue, like the one that I work with, which is Tattered Tales Animal Rescue, okay? If we do not have foster homes, if we don't have places to go with these cats and dogs and puppies and kittens, we can't save them. We can't give them that fighting chance. So a foster-based rescue doesn't have a location. They don't have a building where the animals go and people come and volunteer. They, they rely solely on homes, on people who will take those animals in and provide them the love and guidance and care that they need until they get adopted. Yes, yes, there are times, there are certain puppies we have had come through here over the past few years where we do become attached. You do fall in love, but it's all part of, it's just all part of it. And the more that I have done it, the thicker of the skin that I have grown to these animals. So again, I love them like mad. I love them like they're my own. But at the end of the day, <coughs> I realize that they're not staying here. They're not meant to be here. And that we are just providing them that safe place, that safe haven to learn what a good life is like until their foster, or sorry, till their adoptive home becomes available. Have I cried when I have taken my fosters to get adopted? Yeah, I have. Do I get over it? Yes, I do. Do I cry for days and weeks and months? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, I think I've cried, you know, for a day. And then you have a few days, depending on how long they stay with you, where your house feels a little empty and things feel a little weird, you know, like you miss them. But it is worth every single tear and every emotion you're going to shed when they get adopted. And I promise you that. I promise you that. It's worth every freaking emotion that you're going to feel. Because after it's all said and done, you sit back and go... Oh my God, like I just gave this animal such a beautiful opportunity at a second start, at a fresh start in life. 
and I really wish that more people would open their hearts and their homes to fostering. Give it a chance, give it a chance so that I could never foster because comment, kick it out the door, get rid of it and seriously consider doing it. Try it, try it. Because if you don't try, you don't really know. And if you try it and it hurts that damn bad that you can't do it again, you know what, then at least you tried. And I guarantee you that even if it does hurt when you let your foster go, you're gonna go, I could do this. So anyone who knows me knows that over the years, we typically have had three to four to five dogs <coughs> within our life at any given time. And I'm talking our dogs that we've adopted, not, you know, fosters. Um, so, and being that we're down to two at this point, it has been very weird within the house. It's very different. Um, although it's made a few things a little bit easier. And we continue to foster. We plan to continue to foster as long as situations allow us to do so. Not looking to adopt another dog. I mean, if the right thing, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even gonna put that out there. Um, yes, I have foster failed. I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, Willow, who we have right now, is one of our failures. Um, but I had visions with her. I was well aware that she was meant to stay here. And I'm guided by spirit to follow these things. So, you know, that was entirely different. Um, I'll be honest in saying that we did have a puppy last year that we wanted. We wanted. I mean, we discussed it every single day we wanted to keep her so bad she pulled at our heartstrings my dogs all were in love with her but we knew it was not the right thing to do and we didn't keep her do we regret it no does that sound horrible we don't regret it because we knew it wasn't the right thing to do so you've got to have a little bit of thick skin use your common sense and just don't get attached. Now I know somebody's gonna hear that and go, I can't help but get attached. Give it, a, just give it a try. So I think the biggest thing I wanna get across in this message is that if you are on the fence about fostering and you think you can't do it, give it a try. There are so many local rescues that are hurting for foster homes. And again, guys, if we don't have foster homes, we can not save these animals because we don't have a place to go with them. And do your research. There's tons of local rescues around here. Great rescues. Mm -hmm. Do your research. Find a rescue that feels right for you, that suits you. Reach out, find out what you need to do. So anytime that you're looking to foster, in most cases, you're gonna simply have to fill out a foster application which is gonna be very, very similar to an adoption application for a pet. Can they be lengthy? Yes. Are there reasons that there's 20 million questions on it? You better believe it. Absolutely. Because we don't want to take an animal from a horrible situation and place it in another one. So yes, rescues can and will be choosy about where their fosters or their adopted dogs and cats and animals are going. So understand that. And I know that there's a lot of people that do not work, <coughs> have not volunteered, have not exclusively worked with rescue. So there's a lot of misunderstandings, misconceptions, just why does it have to be like this? There's a reason for everything. So know that as well. But if you're on the fence about fostering, give it a try. If you have questions, reach out. I have people message me all the time with questions about fostering, adopting, all kinds of things. And I am not an expert. So if I don't have the answer to the question that you were looking for, I will get you the answer or I will simply tell you, I don't know if I can't find it, but don't ever hesitate to ask questions. I would rather be able to give you the words that you need to hear, the understandings that you need to have about fostering, than you just shutting off this message and saying, yep, still not doing it. I'm telling you, it is worth it. It is worth the work you put in. It is worth the love that you give. Let me tell you, I'm a little tired. Having puppies ain't easy. It's worth being tired in the morning 
because when you wake up, you wake up with a reason with someone, meaning that animal, and I'm watching her walk around, um, you wake up with a reason, with a purpose to get out of bed. This animal needs me. I need to get up. I need to put it out. I need to feed it. I need to take care of it. It really gives you a sense of purpose and a sense of love. So if you are a caring, loving, compassionate person who loves animals, please consider opening up your home to fostering. Yes, 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 it is worth every second and every emotion. See, Zena agrees. So she is telling you, she's agreeing with me, foster. Fostering saves lives, rescuing saves lives, adopting saves lives. I'm very grateful that we can have a foster in the home at this time um, and have the experience and share our love and our compassion with this beautiful girl who, hold on, let me see if, okay, hold on. Where is she? Where is she? Who's that? Who's that? Say hi, everyone. Say, I am a beautiful little girl and I am grateful to be in a foster home. Yes, I am. Yes, this is the reason. This is the reason we do it right here, right here. So if you're thinking about fostering, right there, right there, that little girl, that little girl is everything right now. Fostering is amazing. Fostering is beautiful. Don't hesitate to ask questions and please think about opening your heart up to a loving, deserving animal who needs a second chance. Love and blessings, everybody. I'll see you soon.